the Dalai Lama's followers keep posting denunciations on public walls. They denounce the worshippers of this deity, giving name, address, and often detailed information about its followers and their whereabouts. An advertisement that appeared in the Times of Tibet and in the magazine Knowledge. Anyone who's against the Dalai Lama must be opposed without hesitation with men, money, and possessions. That is to say, by all means, including violence. Why don't you simply advise people not to worship the deity Dorshi Shukden and instruct others to be tolerant and avoid violence against those who continue to worship it? Nobody harming. Nobody harming on them. But I've seen the calls for violence no, no. in the newspaper. No, no, no. I've seen it with my own eyes. No. I think rumors. Tashi Angtu is the general secretary of the society that published the advertisement demanding ruthless action against all critics of Dalai Lama. He's a well-known politician and president of the Tibetan Regional Council. The nature of our work and the views of the government are one. We don't do anything that goes against the views of the government. He openly confirms to us that their society also threatens to use violence against those Dalai Lama critics who won't listen to them. People and deities are exactly the same. There are official deities and non-official deities. Only deities that are recognized by the government may be worshipped. Worshipping deities that are not recognized by the government is against the law. Those who wanted to continue worshipping the deity had to leave Dharamsala. Galok and his family came to India from Tibet only seven years ago. He wanted to live close to the Dalai Lama. He has been in Delhi for eight months now. Life in Dharamsala has become unbearable. He almost never leaves his little room, an emergency shelter. He does not speak Hindi and he feels alien in Delhi outside the Tibetan community. He was a carpenter in the Norbulinka Institute in Dharamsala. I came here with the Dalai Lama in mind. Now I'm here and am not allowed to attend his teachings. I keep thinking about it again and again. My health was weak and is getting worse. I cannot give up the deity, nor can I give up the Dalai Lama. They say the Dalai Lama wants it this way. In Dharamsala, everyone was against me. He does not know what his family's future will be like. In India, he feels alien. <laughs> Tibet at the end of the 50s. The Dalai Lama at his doctoral exams. Shortly thereafter, he had to flee. It was the oracle of the deity Neishung that advised him to flee, writes the Dalai Lama in his autobiography. Still in a trance, the medium stumbled forward, took paper and pencil and drew clearly and precisely the escape route. To find out more about the escape, a trip to the south of India. The vegetable market in Mysore. The Buddhist monks have lived in the Indian state of Karnataka for almost 40 years. No ordinary monks, they were the bodyguards of the Dalai Lama during his escape into exile in India. The monastery of Sera near Mysore. The previous abbot of this monastery accompanied the Dalai Lama. Lopsang Yesha was his assistant. He went to the oracle of Dorshe Shukten in his retreat in order to request exact instructions, says Lopsang Yeshe, the oracle of this deity that is now prohibited by the Dalai Lama. I was sent to ask the oracle. I was the only one present. The oracle said that the Chinese had prepared everything. The life of the Dalai Lama is no longer safe. You should go to the summer palace tomorrow and ask the Dalai Lama to leave the country via the southern route. Was this the advice the oracle gave? Yes, that's what the protector told me through the oracle, just like we're talking to each other. 
Lobsang Yeshe tells us that the oracle gave precise instructions as to how and by which route the escape should take place with the monks as his bodyguards. But the Dalai Lama does not recognize the help of this deity. <laughs> that contradicts the law of truth. Actually, how can he speak like that? If it had not been for Dorje Shugden's help at that time, an escape would have been really difficult. The bodyguards left the summer palace first. Farther to the south, at a secret place, they met with the Dalai Lama troops. Normally, it's so difficult to see or meet the Dalai Lama. I thought, what a lucky moment. On the one hand, I was happy. On the other hand, I was also very sad, and tears came to my eyes. The others rode on horses, and we followed them on foot. We had to carry all sorts of things, swords, rifles, and so forth. We walked and walked, and could not keep up. The escape took 13 days. At the border, the bodyguard said goodbye to the Dalai Lama and returned to Tibet. I was very sad. Now the Dalai Lama and his great teachers are going. They're all going to India. We must return. <laughs> on the one hand, I was happy that they were in safety. But on the other hand, I was very sad when I thought of the future. We owe so much to His Holiness. I think of this always. <laughs> but nowadays it's so desperate. <laughs> now they insult us for relying on this deity. The Tibetans harass us. We've never criticized the Dalai Lama. We work so hard for him. We've never done anything against the Dalai Lama. He's our teacher. In the months to come, 100,000 Tibetans followed the Dalai Lama into exile.